I believe that physical activity can reduce our inequalities. I think it can be important for you as an individual, but also for us as a society. Probably not for the reasons that you might think, though. I want to start by asking for a show of hands. Who in this room thinks that they should be doing more physical activity? So pretty much everyone in the room, OK. The issue when we ask this question, though, is that many people aren't really clear how much activity they should be doing. The World Health Organization have evidence-based guidelines that suggest that adults should be doing at least 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity physical activity. However, you could also be doing 75 minutes a week of vigorous intensity physical activity, or a combination of both. So for most adults, this translates to doing at least half an hour of activity on about five days of the week. And for children, they should be doing more than this. So the recommendations are that they should be doing at least 60 minutes a day of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. One of the issues, though, is that people aren't really sure what is meant by this moderate to vigorous intensity activity. Research, however, has looked to see how this equates to our walking speed. And it's found for most adults, this would equate to roughly walking at about 100 steps per minute. So probably about the same pace as John Travolta walks down the street in Saturday Night Fever in time to the Bee Gees. The issue, though, is that many adults aren't doing anywhere near this amount of activity. This diagram then shows a map of the world and the colours represent the amount of physical inactivity amongst adults. The top panel shows men and the bottom panel shows women. So the reds and the darker reds represent greater amounts of physical inactivity. So for example, if we look at the UK then, we can see that over 50% of the population are not doing sufficient amounts of physical activity. In 2010, the World Health Organization suggested that one in four adults globally are not doing sufficient amounts of activity. And for our adolescents, so our teenagers, over 80% were not doing the right amounts of physical activity. And it's been described as a pandemic. So this is a global problem. It's not isolated to a few countries. It's across the board. But you might be wondering why this really matters. Does it really matter if we're doing amount of physical activity? Well, the answer is yes, it really does matter. Physical activity is related with many chronic health conditions. And reaching the recommended evidence-based guidelines suggests that you can reduce your risk of stroke, reduce your risk of heart disease, reduce obesity, and reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes, as well as reducing your risk of many types of cancers. But more than this, though, you can also reduce your risk of premature mortality. So the chances of you dying earlier are reduced by doing adequate amounts of physical activity. Now, a recent study looked at a huge sample of adults across Europe. So they followed over 333,000 adults for a 12-year period. What they found then was that those who were moderately inactive reduced your risk of mortality by between 16 and 30% compared to being completely inactive. So just doing a 20-minute walk a day would reduce your risk of dying by up to 30%. So that's huge motivation for me to engage in more physical activity. But as we've seen for many people globally, this isn't strong enough motivation. However, there's a wide range of lesser known benefits of physical activity. And it's these benefits that I think are really key in terms of reducing our inequalities. A review then looked at all the evidence in children and found that increased physical activity was associated with reduced risk of depression. It was also associated with a reduced risk of anxiety and also increases in self-esteem. And this was across children and adolescents. Now, these findings echo similar results for adults and older adults, so across the lifespan. Now, in addition, it's also thought that those who do more physical activity can actually make you happier. Earlier this year, Richards and colleagues published a large study, again from adults across Europe. They had 11,000 adults, and they asked questions about whether they were happy or not, how much activity they were doing, and what they found was regardless of people's country, their age, their gender, their occupation, or even their marital status, that those who were doing insufficient amounts of activity were actually 20% happier than those who were completely inactive. So this is insufficient levels, so not meeting the recommended guidelines. However, 
for those who met the recommended guidelines, they reported being 29% happier than those who were completely inactive. And even more interesting then, is that people who were doing double the recommended amounts of physical activity were actually 52% happier than those adults who were completely inactive. So a huge benefit in terms of our well-being for being physically active. Now you might wonder why this really matters, but our well-being is important for us not only as an individual, but also in terms of our family and also wider society. So depression is one of the greatest contributors to the global burden of disease that we face at the moment. So what this means is that loss of productivity through depression and the burden on our health service is one of the real issues that we have to tackle at the moment. But there's more benefits to physical activity. This scan shows results from an EEG scan of a child's brain. So it represents activation in the brain. The blues and the greens would represent lower levels of activation, whereas the yellows and the reds represent increased activation. So looking at the picture on the left then is the representation of a child's brain when they're sitting quietly. So probably looking quite similar to how yours does at the moment. And on the right, then, we can see increased activation after doing just a 20-minute walk. So this short amount of activity was enough for us to see increased activation in a child's brain. Now, this activation translates directly to improvements in terms of our cognitive skills. So improvements in terms of our attention, our memory, and also whether we can inhibit distracting information. So ignore all of those things that might be pulling your attention. So these cognitive functions, they're also talked about as executive functions. They're the really key parts of our cognitive processes. And they're important not only for enabling you to listen to me while I'm talking at the moment, but also they're important for your performance at work, for children's performance at school, and also in terms of longer, lifelong benefits in terms of our health and well-being too. So really key functions. So we can see from this evidence then that there's an immediate impact of a short amount of physical activity. And we wanted to know whether there was actually a longer term benefit as well. So we conducted a study using children who'd taken part in the Avon Longitudinal Study of Parents and Children. So this is a large scale birth cohort where about 15,000 children have been followed since their mothers were pregnant with them. Every year, they take part in lots of different tests, fill out questionnaires about how they're feeling, how they're doing at school, what their health is like. Now, at 11 years old, about 6,000 of them agreed to have their physical activity monitored. And this was done using this device, as you can see here, called an accelerometer. So it measures how much activity people were doing, but also the intensity of the activity. So we could see how long people were walking for, how fast they were going, if children were running or not. So about 5,500 of these children then wore the accelerometers for about a week, so we could get a snapshot of how much activity they were doing. And we managed to have data linkage to their school exam results, so objective measurements of their school performance at 11 years old, at 13 years old, and also at 16 years old. What we found was quite stark evidence. So there's a positive relationship between physical activity that was being done at 11 years old and school performance at 11 years old. But there was also a positive relationship between activity at 11 and school performance at 13 and still at 16 years old. So those who were doing more physical activity at 11 years old were doing better at school five and six years later than those who were doing less activity. This diagram shows clearly the relationship between activity and attainment. So when children were grouped based on how much activity they were doing at 11 years old, and we plot it against their school exam results five years later. So we can clearly see that the children who were the most active had substantially higher school results than those who were the least active. And this was true for the boys and the girls, and regardless of school subject, so for English, maths, and science. So we found this long-term substantial benefit of being more physically active. However, we don't think it's a completely linear relationship. So for example, you don't just keep on doing more and more activity and get cleverer and cleverer and do better and better at your exams. Okay? We see something more like a curvilinear relationship. So for example, at the bottom, we had people who don't terribly do very much activity and don't tend to do very well at school. Then we get to a point at the top 
where we see people who are doing a lot more activity and tend to do better in terms of their school results. So we think of our friend um, Roadrunner and how he's always outsmarting Wile E. Coyote. But then there stops being as much of an added benefit. So we think about Fred Flintstone. He was very active in terms of his commute to work. So if you imagine his car with his feet running along the bottom. So he did lots and lots of activity. But we don't tend to think of him as being especially intelligent. So there comes to a point then that physical activity doesn't add any more. However, in our sample, none of the children were doing anywhere near the amounts of activity where it would stop being beneficial. So our most active group, the boys were only averaging 55 minutes a day of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. And for the girls, it was only 37 minutes a day. So quite low levels. So we see then that there's this long-term benefit of doing more physical activity. I should specify, though, that this isn't supportive of a causal relationship. We see these positive associations. However, there's a number of intervention studies where randomised control trials have been carried out, where children have been given a prescribed amount of activity. For example, Davi Davies and colleagues, children were given a 40-minute bout of activity, and they saw improvements in terms of their cognitive skill and also their academic performance compared to those who were doing no activity. So these sorts of intervention studies are supportive of a causal relationship in terms of increased activity and improvements in cognition and school attainment. So coupled together then, this research demonstrates that there's really a benefit from being more physically active and that this benefit is across the lifespan because similar evidence has been found in adults and older adults too. Now one of the key things about our study was that we were able to control for a wide range of factors. So, for example, we could take into account children's age, also their birth weight, also their ethnicity, their mother's age during pregnancy, their mother's oily fish intake during pregnancy, because we know that that has an impact on children's brain development. We also took into account whether the mother smoked or not, and also the children's body mass index, so their weight to height ratio in comparison to the population of children. But crucially, we were able to control for the mother's education and their social economic status, so based on their occupation, so whether they were living in a more deprived area or not. So we found that there was a positive relationship between physical activity and school attainment, regardless of children's social background. So it wasn't just the children that we would expect to do better at school that improved. It was across the board, so regardless of any sort of deprivation that they might be in. We're living in a world of increasing inequalities. This graph shows the proportion of wealth globally, and we can see that it's very unequal. Not only is there inequality between countries, though, there's also increasing inequality within countries. A report published last year said that there's 23 countries in the world where inequalities were growing. Unfortunately, the UK was the only G7 country where inequalities are actually growing compared to others where they're getting narrower. So we see this big increase in terms of inequalities within our country. These inequalities in wealth directly translate to inequalities in terms of health and also social status as well. So we see this increase in terms of a wide range of inequalities. But more than this though, they also relate to inequalities in terms of children's educational performance. This graph shows data collected in Scotland. It plots children's vocabulary score against their parents' education level. So the panels on the left would represent parents who've got the least qualifications, and the darker red you get, the parents have got increased qualifications, up to degree level. So we can clearly see that children's vocabulary at three years old, there's a big difference depending on whether their parents are more or less qualified. We can also see that this difference is still there at five years old. And if we look at just the mean difference between the most and the least educated, we can see there's a substantial gap there. So children whose parents are least educated already are behind in terms of their vocabulary at three years old. And this gap continues to five years old. Unfortunately, the gap doesn't get any narrower. So when we plot children's attainment score, depending on their parents' socioeconomic status, we can see that children who parents have a higher SES, tend to do better on test scores at 22 months. So when they're less than two years old, and we can see that this 
continues up until 10 years old. So children who are from the most affluent and most less deprived areas are doing better in their school results across the board. The gap is just getting bigger. It's not getting any narrower. But this isn't a new problem. So what we can see here is school attainment plotted for those who are the most deprived compared to those in the least deprived areas. And we can see that there's a huge gap in terms of their school attainment when they leave school, and that this has been the case for a number of years. So our inequalities are growing in terms of wealth, in terms of health, and also in terms of educational achievement, which will have a lifelong impact for these children. Now, it's been suggested that physical activity can reduce health inequalities. And we think that our results that show a positive relationship between physical activity and cognition and school attainment are supportive of the fact that physical activity can also reduce the inequalities that we see in education. Potentially then, activity is one way that we can try and address this balance and reduce the widening gap. It's been suggested then that children from the lowest starting point benefit the most from any sort of intervention or programme. And that actually it might be one way to level the playing field. So potentially physical activity is a real tool for us to address our inequalities. So the challenge then is how we're going to reduce these inequalities. How do we get people to be more physically active? Many people report barriers to activity, such as time, money, but also in terms of their environment. It's not always necessary and able for people to engage in the amounts of activity that they would like to do. The challenge then is for us to be able to change our infrastructure. We need to be innovative in terms of our infrastructure and also our use of technology to try and encourage people to be more physically active, especially those from the most deprived areas. I believe that physical activity can benefit our society and hopefully I've given you the evidence that you need to make a difference. Thank you. <laughs>